Hello everyone, I am Ginger and welcome to my live stream. Today I'm going to tell about some news stories, some of them lesser known stories, and I'm going to give my opinion on them. First I'm going to start with a story I did a week or so ago. It's the one about the Waffle House where a reporter was in a fantasy football league and he came in last place. So he lost a bet and had to stay 24 hours in a Waffle House. But for every waffle he ate, he got to take an hour off. And the waffles around this big, they're huge. And he ended up eating nine waffles. <laughs> that's a lot of waffles. And he stayed there for 15 hours. So that's my update. Uh, he, he hadn't finished eating them at the time, so I couldn't report on the total number last cast, newscast. Okay, now I want to take us all the way to China. Yes, and no, this isn't going to be a negative thing. They want to be the first ones to settle Mars, and I believe the year is 2033. Of course, I'm sure the United States and other countries want to be the first too to do that. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets to be first. But there's one thing I know. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, even if I was invited to go to Mars, there's no way. And there's several reasons. The first, it's a dry planet. There's no lake. I love the water. I live on a lake and I love the beach. And there's no way I want to live somewhere where I cannot get to a big body of water. And also, there's no coffee. There's no coffee shop. There's no making coffee at home. And there's a lack of chocolate. So why anybody with no lack of water, lack of coffee, lack of chocolate want to, want to go and live on a planet? I don't know. There's something wrong in their mind. I'm joking. <laughs> Actually, they're very adventurous people and I give them a lot of Go for it, spirit, but it's just not going to be me. Who knows? Maybe some of them will get up there and have little babies while they're there, and they can have the first Martians running around. That'd be cute, but just not going to be me. Now on to our next story, and I'm going to take us to Japan. Okay, the way I understand it is in Japan, there's a cultural um, economics difference between people who live in a city and people who live in more rural areas. And because of the stigma of living in the rural areas, a lot of them have become ghost towns, or they're on the way to becoming ghost towns. So the government is now offering a lot of those houses, very nice houses, for $500 and tax breaks to try to get people to live in the rural areas. Okay, I believe this is only for the citizens of Japan. Unfortunately, I can't just go and buy a house in Japan because $500, I mean, for a house is cool. And having a house in another across the world would be neat too, but I don't believe it's just for regular people. It has to be for their people. So, but still, I think that's pretty cool. And it's, boy, it'd be interesting to see if it works. I hope it does for them. Okay, on to the next story. Next year is Elton's John final tour. I believe it goes through 2022. And he's actually coming close enough that I could go, but I can't go. And the reason is, it's going to be in a big stadium, a football stadium. And the seats, the cheaper the seats are, the higher they, the higher, I mean, the seats are on the stadium, the cheaper they are, starting at a hundred something dollars. But I have this major fear of heights. And there's no way I could be on the 100, 200, or even 300 dollar seats. I can't do it. I have to be towards the bottom where they're more between 3,000 and 10,000 dollars. I'm serious, I couldn't do it. So. Yeah, so that's a problem. Um, yeah, so I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to go because even though I love Elton John, I'm not going to pay between $3,000 and $10,000 to see him in concert. That's just a little bit too steep for me. I mean, if somebody wants to take me, fine, but I'm just kidding. But seriously, it's just, I wish I didn't have that height thing, but there's no way I could go to the top of the stadium and just sit there. It'd be, it just can't happen. Okay. But I am kind of sad that it's going to be his last tour. Maybe they show some on TV or something, because he's a great entertainer, and I would love to see him. All right, let's go to the next one. If you want to keep looking down, I have everything on a paper. Or I will forget. <laughs> There's so many different stories going on. Okay. Oh, sad news. The Free Britney campaign didn't work. The judge ruled, nope, your dad's got to still be conservator. But he did take a company. It's named Beth. Bessemer Trust, and he made them the co-conservator. So maybe they will keep things in order, I hope, and maybe they make things 
more legit if they're not. I'm not saying they are or not, but I can't understand not wanting to be controlled by people. I would hate it if someone had complete control over me and what I could or couldn't do. It's terrible. And yeah, I can understand her, especially since she's the one making her money, wanting control over it. I really understand that. I'm sorry it didn't work out for her. Now, more on to a more serious story. Allison Mack, she used to play on Smallville. Okay, full disclosure, I didn't watch Smallville, but she used to play on that. And she was up on charges because um, she was part of a sex cult where um, Keith Rainier, I probably pronounced his name wrong, sorry if I did, he got 120 years in jail. And she was supposed to be charged with recruiting people into the club. And what made it so bad is that they were actually branding the women and using them as sex slaves, basically sex trafficking. So she's got three years in a federal prison for her part in, I'm not sure exact charge they got her on, but she got three years in federal prison. And um, the way I see it, she had to be brainwashed some herself to even be part of that club. So I hope she gets the help she needs and not do something else like that. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for joining. I'm just telling all the different news stories that's going on. So on to the next one, which is about Jeff Bezos. Okay, he's going up, of course, on the Blue Origins to fly in space, but that's not the story I'm going to focus on. It's the fact that they started a petition. I know it's a joke, but it, they got 120, over 120,000 signatures that he's not allowed back on Earth. Now, the reason I'm touching on this is because in our society, for some reason, they think if somebody's rich or they're famous, you could do anything or say anything to them and it doesn't matter. When in reality, we're all human. And because of that, it's going to hurt. And it's actually a form of bullying. In my opinion, that's a form of bullying. Hi. Yeah, that's a form of bullying and it's wrong. And the people who's doing that should be ashamed of themselves for doing that. Of course, they're not going to be. They think it's a joke. But now I know if over 100,000 people wanted me not to come back to Earth, I would take it personally and be very hurt. So I'm sure he is too. Not a nice thing to do. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you how to get a free shirt at Epcot. Of course, I wouldn't do this myself, but a woman went into Epcot wearing a bikini top, and they gave her a certificate and had to get a shirt to cover up. Now, I don't have a problem with people wearing bikini tops, but they have to think about it. Epcot, for those who don't know, is part of Disney, and it's family-oriented. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so Epcot is a family-oriented place. So when someone comes there wearing, and it's not a water park, and you got people from all over the world and different cultures, different religions, so it's only common decency to put on clothes when you go to Epcot, not to wear a short little bikini top showing everything. So they gave her a certificate, and I think she picked out the most expensive shirt they had. <laughs> you know, I mean, someone's going to wear a bikini top to Epcot, of course they're going to get the most expensive shirt. <laughs> So I'm not suggesting that you actually wear a bikini top and get a free shirt at Epcot, but that's one way to go. <laughs> oh my, so I'm not going to do that myself. Oh my goodness. Um, see, so yeah, I look at my little thing. Okay, them are the main news stories. Of course, they have a lot of, I wasn't touching on the more tragic news stories of the day, because there are some major ones going on this week. Okay, so I had a question for everybody. This is just a hypothetical fantasy question. I thought it'd be fun to ask. If somebody came up to you and they offered you two houses in addition to where you live now, completely free and tax-free for life, with the condition one had to be in the country you live in now, not in the area, and one abroad, where are the two places you pick and why? Okay, so if you can even, if you'd like to answer in the comment section, feel free to. I would pick for abroad, I thought about Paris, but I don't speak French, so that wouldn't be a good idea. So I'm thinking England, because it's close enough that I can visit Scotland and Ireland and all the different places in Europe. I could actually travel there. And there's also a little shop called Cyberdog I want to visit where they sell this futuristic space stuff. And there's different reasons I want to visit it. Um, so it's, seen, it's a clothing shop, so that's a reason I want to go there. Now, the United States is a little bit more complicated. As of now, I probably pick Florida and um, a beach house. It's got to be a beach house. But I'm not going to stay firm on that one because I got friends and relatives that lives in California and I've never been 
to California yet, so I can't really say until I go there and see the beaches. So it's going to either be Florida or California beach house, if I got chose. Oh, Stephanie says, West Coast, West Coast Ireland, because they're so nice and it's so beautiful. Also English speaking. <laughs> yes, that's very important. Oh, yeah, I'd love to go to Ireland and to... Um, Yes, I have ancestors from Ireland, so that'd be really neat. And yes, yeah, so I, I chose England just because I could go to different, could visit Ireland and could visit Scotland, but I could also do that from Ireland, so that's really cool. Okay. Now, talking about beaches, though, um, it's been forever since I've been on vacation to the beach and I want to go. Now, technically, you could say that I went to the beach in the fall of 2018, but it doesn't count. You may be thinking, if you went to the beach, how does it not count? Well, I picked the wrong time ago. I got there and they was having the red tide. That's when a bunch of fish dies and they wash up on shore and it stinks. So I went on a short walk and it was, oh, it smells so bad. I could not do it. And then, I kid you not, a hurricane came while I was there. Yes, it wasn't, it didn't do too much damage, but a hurricane came and boom. <laughs> so I did not get to enjoy the beach. So yes, I do not count that as a beach trip. <laughs> So I have to pick the time again. Okay, Stephanie says, and I pick a nice secluded beach house here probably, but far enough away from the erosion. Oh yeah, far away from the erosion, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it, the house doesn't have to be exactly on the beach. It could be far enough away where I can see the beach and walk to it because I definitely don't want any erosion happening on my home, that's for sure. So I have to be careful of that, but definitely a house. It's, Stephanie, also coastline is prettier here, but sand and water is prettier in the Gulf Coast. Yes. And also the water would be different because you've got the bigger waves where people can surf in California. And, but in Florida, it's not really big enough waves to really do surfing. Maybe they can use one of the little paddle boards, but you can't really surf in Florida, although I'm not going to surf. <laughs> yeah, I do. I agree. I haven't been to California, but I do agree that the sandy white beaches are so beautiful in Florida. Oh. I do love them. They are so beautiful. But I would like to see the different sea life in California. So it would be a toss up. But yeah, see, walking distance. Yeah, definitely walking distance to the beach would be wonderful. I, I do agree with that one 100%. <laughs> I do want to do that. But like I said, that, we're going to do damage to my home, but I definitely won't be able to see it. Okay, you don't surf either? Yeah, well. I, it looks so wonderful. It looks like so much fun to surf, but you have to have strong arms to swim out there, and then you have to have the balance. And I can't even skateboard. I, I fall off a skateboard, so I can imagine I would not be able to stand up for very long on a surfboard. <laughs> that would go over, not go over well, probably. So the chances of me actually being able to surf are very small. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. I do know that certain parts of California is close to the mountains too, so that'd be nice to go, be able to go to the mountains and the botanical gardens and things along those areas and there's places that has parrots flying around that's nice too which you don't have in Tennessee we have different li wildlife so yeah so that'd be nice but hmm, definitely um, want to go to yeah Florida probably more than likely but there's always a possibility I mean if it's text free I could always pick a place in Malibu or something if it's going to be a fantasy house that's tax free I might as well go go big if I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, so, okay, let's do one more fantasy question because I already finished my news stories for today, and this is a fun one. If there's a zombie apocalypse and you turn into a zombie, but you've got your choice of who you want it to eat first, who would it be and why? <laughs> okay. Oh, you live in live in Tennessee? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful here, too. Yeah, okay. So my answer is, I want to, somebody had to start the zombie apocalypse. It had to be somebody's fault. So whose ever fault it was, that's the person I want to eat first. I guess you just eat the brains if you're a zombie. I don't know. But, but I would not want to eat any of the really good scientists or doctors because somebody has to find a cure for the zombieism. Yes, who would you want to eat first? If you were a zombie, if you turn into a zombie, you could eat anybody in the world for any reason. Who would you want to eat first? You have to eat a person, so Stephanie would ask and eat first question marks. <laughs> yeah, I would eat whoever started the apocalypse. I mean, there's got to be somebody who 
whose fault it is. That's the person that needs to go down first. <laughs> but I know. That'd be, but we've got to keep the. Um, you eat me? Oh no! <laughs> I'm staying away from you. I'm good thing I live in Tennessee and not close to you. But okay, why would you eat me first? <laughs> joke. I know it's a joke. <laughs> I know Stephanie. That's uh, in real life, so that's probably a joke. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Eat me first. Probably be some people out there who would. <laughs> they want me to go down, but yeah. But I would. Do not want the scientists, the really good scientists and doctors, to go down because somebody needs to cure the zombieism because that terrible skin complexion and all the other stuff that goes with it, no more chocolate and stuff. It'd be a bad disease to have, so got to keep <laughs> those people alive. But whoever started it, they're going down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm sure some people could have some interesting answers for that question. If anybody sees this at a later date, wants to put their <laughs> comments in the section, feel free to. But please keep them PG. <laughs> i got people from all different religions and cultures that watch my live streams. So that's why I like to keep it PG here. Okay. Oh my. So that was a second question that I had. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, like I said, I finished all my new stories. Um, I asked one more quick question that's not at all controversial. Watermelon, with or, the, with or without salt? I eat it without salt. <laughs> Your answer is good. Probably just the first bad guy. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just eat the first bad guy. But I say watermelon without the salt. <laughs> I know some of the other questions people wouldn't want to answer, so the watermelon question is an easy one. Watermelon, my mom used to eat it with salt, and I think most of the people in my family ate it with salt, but I always ate it without salt. That's just me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so any of the questions I asked today, I asked three of them. Be sure to leave the answers in the comments section so I can read them. The real good ones I can read off next time on the, if anyone answers, I can read them off on my next live stream. <laughs> oh, without, yeah, you, I'm with you on that one. I definitely want to go without. <laughs> 100%, which seems weird. Oh, seems weird. Yeah, um, people, they say it actually makes it sweeter for some reason. Yeah, I'm about to run to love you too. Yeah, and I really want to come see you one day. Little baby, <laughs> definitely Cute. cutest baby. Oh my goodness! Before the baby gets too old and not a baby anymore. Goodness. Okay. Well, yes, I agree. And also, somebody told me that if you freeze watermelon in the cubes, it actually makes it sweeter. I don't know why, but they say it does. So, it might be worth a shot. <laughs> okay. Well, that seems to be it for today, because I said all my news stories. So, until next time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. I have a friend. Stephanie just says, come visit. Yeah, I also have a friend that lives in the L.A. area, so that'd be cool. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to make it up there. I actually have my nephews coming to visit this weekend. <laughs> Kevin and his son are coming to visit, so that'd be nice. So hopefully I'll be able to come. Definitely want to make it that way. When After the heat wave, right now that heat wave is, ugh, I don't want to go to the beach when it's quite this hot. So, yeah, California after the heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I gotta go. And until next time, peace out, peace in, peace all around. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.